Ireland's unemployment rate continued its steady fall in October, easing to 9.3%. Employment has increased strongly since the jobless rate hit a high of 15.1% in early 2012. Talking through this, I'm joined by Juliet Tennant, economist with Good Body Stockbrokers. So Juliet, unemployment rate data just out today, relatively stable with a fall of just 0.1%. Now, last time we spoke in January, we were very excited for unemployment falling to 10.6%, and it seems that the Irish labour market is continuing its recovery mode. Are we going to see further falls in unemployment, or is it beginning to plateau? Yeah, that's right. Now, the unemployment rate did fall again in October, it's now 9.3%. It had been stable at around 95 through much of the summer, but it started to fall again over the past couple of months. The labour market is where the first signs of the Irish recovery were evident back in 2012, and it has continued to perform well since, with employment growth actually accelerating again in the second quarter of this year. Um, encouragingly, the recovery is both one of quality um, in that it is driven by full-time jobs growth, and it is brought based with the majority of sectors experiencing growth over the last year um, and we expect that the positive economic backdrop and the fledgling recovery in the construction sector um, will translate into further falls in un unemployment helping the rate to fall below nine percent by the end of this year. Let's look to Ireland's interest rate. There are concerns rising over the outlook for the world economy and expectations for the ECB to increase its program of quantitative easing in December. How does the interest rate environment look to you? The issue is that inflation is proving to be very elusive and that the Fed, the Bank of England and the ECB are all failing to maintain inflation in anywhere close to their 2% targets. I mean, we've had record low interest rates and asset purchase programs in one form or another across developed economies essentially since the downturn and none of them have been able to stoke up inflation. Um, now, a large part of that in the past year or so is down to the collapse in the oil price. The fears that low inflation will become entrenched is making it very difficult for the Fed or the Bank of England to tighten monetary policy. The ECB is facing another set of issues. I mean, it's setting monetary policy for a region where economic growth is still subdued and inflation is flat to negative. Um, and where the effects of zero interest rates and ongoing um, QE program is yet to feed through. And essentially the ECB will have to act further if it is to try to fulfill its inflation mandate. And that could be in the form of expanding or extending its current QE program or indeed cutting its deposit rate, um, as recently floated by uh, Mario Draghi. Looking ahead to Thursday, where we'll see inflation rate data out for Ireland, what are your expectations for these releases? There, there has been low or no inflation in Ireland, I suppose, over the past two years or so, and the headline is currently flat, um, and as you say, it is due to the, the global influences on energy and food prices in particular, and we do expect that these outside factors are going to continue to weigh on Irish inflation in the coming months. That said, though, the headline rate does disguise some underlying price rises, and the most pertinent of these is rents which are rising at a rate of almost 10% per annum, and that reflects the shortage of housing in Ireland. Um, so while the headline rate is likely to remain subdued in line with global developments, there are some areas domestically where inflationary pressures are building. That was Juliet Tennant with me there. That's all from myself for now. For more insight and analysis, though, you can keep clicking back to Dukascopy TV.